Hi everybody, it's Dr. Magnifico from jaredsylvetandpolly.com. This is Hank, he's an eight-year-old beagle. He came in to see us 10 days ago. 10 days ago, his family found him lying in the backyard on his side in what we call lateral recumbency. He was unable to stand, unable to walk. He was painful all over. Um, when, I, when they came in, I immediately suspected he was in a vertebral disc disease. We did an exam and we did x-rays. That's about $100 here. And then we started working him up for that. We ruled out tick paralysis. Um, and, and based on logistics and finances, we were not, not able to do an MRI, so we couldn't rule out things like fibrocartilage emboli. Um, so he was a suspect IVD D case. Um, the, some of the things that you can do at home and some of the things that we do in the hospital, the treatment for that is if you cannot afford an MRI, a neurologist, and, and disc compression surgery, then typically we, we provide um, conservative management, which is cage rest. We really want these guys in a cage for six to eight weeks. That's how long it takes for them to heal. So very minimal walking and moving to try to allow the, the spine and the disc to heal enough so that they are not so painful that they can get up and start moving again. So I just wanted to go over on this video a couple of things that we do here in the first couple of days of IVD disease. Um, these dogs are really, really, really painful, no doubt about it. If you go near them, they scream. They're so painful, they don't want to be touched, they don't want to be handled, they don't want to be moved. You have to do it anyway. We don't want them lying on one side and one side only. So it's super important to keep rotating them. So if he's down on his right side, we want to rotate him to his left side. There's lots of little tricks for that. Sometimes we use a towel and we just sort of roll them up in the towel, sort of like a burrito, and then we roll them on that. The other thing that I typically do is I keep um, pillow bolsters or big pillows wedged in between them so he's staying sternal as much as possible and then just sort of gently rotating him from one side to the other. It's also really really important to make sure they're urinating and defecating and eating and drinking. Those are you know really the four mainstays. Um, some of the things that we do in the hospital is we keep a little chart. So we're going to show you what we do here. You know, we're monitoring for urine, bowel movement, vomiting, diarrhea, and the appetite. So we've got a nice little chart here. It's, you know, plus or minus based on what's going on with them. We're monitoring temperature. We're monitoring weight. We're monitoring what's going in and what's going out. And then some of the things that you can talk to your veterinarian about managing your patient at home. We use lactulose. Lactulose is a stimulant. So because it is so painful for them to defecate they, and they can't posture to defecate, you have to make sure that you keep the stool really soft so that it can pass. So lactulose, it comes in a big giant bottle and it is super cheap. The other thing that we typically do is we put them on a gastroprotectant. So that is gonna be Caraphate and it's gonna be Famotidine. Those two things are available over the counter. So your veterinarian can give you a prescription for them. The mainstay for conservative treatment is typically a steroid. Steroid is prednisone. And that is another really, really cheap drug. And then the things that we do for pain management are Tramadol and um, Robaxin. All of those things are available from Walmart, quite honestly. You probably medically man can manage these guys for less than $100, and he is on six drugs. He's on six drugs and lactulose, and still the medication for those, if you get them generic and if you get them at, at one of the big box stores, can be really, really affordable. So if this happens to your dog, ask your veterinarian about some affordable options for you if cage rest is your only option and surgery is not an option. Um, you've got to maintain the day-to-day -day stuff, so that's urinating, defecating, you have to be monitoring for that. A lot of these guys, if they have a lesion lower in the spine, urinating and defecating can really be a problem. Some of them need to be manually expressed, you need to know how to do that and your veterinarian can show you how to do that and then you just have to watch out for other post-op sorry post um, disease complications like urine retention um, constipation and, and 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 the stuff that goes on with the GI tract thankfully Hank has been doing really well he's eating and drinking well and he's been urinating and defecating normally every day so that hasn't been an issue for him um, after that it's starting to do PT at home and we're going to do another video on how to do physical therapy with your dog at home there's lots of little tricks um, you know no doubt the first couple of days are the hardest without a doubt the first two to three days can be really really terrible these guys are really painful and it definitely takes a couple days for that to um, subside it has been eight days before he stopped screaming in pain and every once in a while if I pick him up the wrong way he's gonna scream I know it's hard I know a lot of people want to give up I know they feel like their dog is in too much pain but I really encourage you to give them 
a week, preferably two, they do get better really in most cases and you can manage the pain. Talk to your veterinarian about what pain managements are, option, are, are available to you. Talk to them about what to do at two o'clock in the morning when they're so painful, they can't sleep, they're panting, they're restless. Which drugs can you use more of? Which ones can you not use more of? Which ones are safe to, to give additionally? Um, he was so painful that multiple nights at two o'clock in the morning, I had to give him another dose of his muscle relaxant, which is Robaxin, and his tramadol just to get him to sleep through the night comfortably. Um, and there were a lot of nights where I was up a lot with him trying to get him more comfortable and relaxed. You know, if you are having a tough time with your dog, talk to your veterinarian, stay in close communication with them, definitely through the first week, and then find some support. There's lots of Facebook pages that are really great, and then find somebody, whether it's a technician at your vet's office or a friend who can give you a break every once in a while. Um, at my house, because we were taking care of, of Hank this weekend, my husband and I took shifts just so I could get some rest because he really can be a full-time job. Um, stay tuned for the next couple of videos. We're going to do some on physical therapy at home and how to monitor your dog and you know how to understand what's going on with them and what questions to ask your vet. If you have any questions, you can find me anytime at probably.com or Jared's Vet. Wish Hank well.